Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a body language and statement analysis assessment of ex-celebrity, shall we say, Michael Barrymore. Now the cold case is back in the news in the last week here in the UK because one of the nine people that were at the house that night, if you take away Stuart because he was tragically murdered, it's eight other people, including Michael Barrymore, one of them has been arrested on suspicion of the murder and attack on Stuart Lubbock and we have recently found out that that person is 50 years old. They've not given out the name but all you really need to do is find out everyone that was at that party that night, look how old they were when it occurred 20 years ago and figure out who's now 50. Now I'm not going to say who that person is, I've figured it out but I'm not going to put their name out there because the police haven't given their name out but as I said do the math and you can figure out easy enough who the person is that's been arrested. After a night out clubbing, they invited a group of men and women back to Michael's house for a party. It was all quiet at Michael Barrymore's home today. On Friday night, he'd been at the Millennium Club in Harlow with friends. But just hours later, 31-year-old Stuart Lubbock was found unconscious in Barrymore's swimming pool. As the story unfolded, a post-mortem revealed severe internal injuries to the dead man. Couldn't take it in at first, what on earth was going on. A horrendous situation for everyone. It just escalated and escalated. Michael's behaviour on the night was also under scrutiny. When I found out that Michael had run away, I knew that was the wrong thing to do. Um, having worked for the police for 25 years. The detectives investigated the death of Stuart Lubbock on March the 31st have made three arrests this morning. The police arrested Michael's boyfriend and another man on suspicion of murder and then released them without charge. Michael was also arrested and cautioned on drug offences. Stories crept out bit by bit. Drink and, and drugs had been found in Stuart Lubbock's blood. And Flint Street, this was a bean feast, I'm afraid. In 2002, there was an inquest where Michael abstained from comment. Barrymore exercised his right not to answer questions about drugs at the inquest. Now remember, this is the guy, the star, that had always been open, friendly to everybody. The coroner recorded an open verdict. I've been unable to determine how exactly Stuart came to his death. With the case still open, in 2006, Essex police launched a second inquiry, eventually arresting Michael and two other men from the night on suspicion of serious sexual assault and murder. We remain committed to finding out the truth of what happened that night. Someone knows, and I hope their conscience to do the right thing will eventually prevail. I've been asking for years for this to be done and uh, to bring it to a conclusion, essentially for uh, Stuart's family and for myself. All three were released without charge. But the damage to Michael's career seemed irreversible. Now the video I'm basing my assessment of Michael Barrymore on is a Piers Morgan interview that Michael Barrymore gave a number of years ago. In the interview, Michael Barrymore is quite animated, he cries, he shouts, he screams, I fucked up, I fucked up, and his behaviour is a bit strange. That's why I wanted to get this video out and done. From the heights of fame to rock bottom, you had a very long way to fall. <laughs> In the late 90s, Michael was still riding high as Mr. Primetime. He'd also found new love with 24-year-old city broker, Sean Davis. Love is the answer. Something I feel about Michael Barrymore throughout the interview, I don't always feel that he's sort of telling lies, but there are a few strange things about his body language. Something positive is that he does maintain eye contact with Piers Morgan throughout the interview, but quite often he looks down like that. Sometimes he's looking off to the side, um, but there's a lot of emotion on Michael Barrymore's face. I don't feel that he's a psychopath or someone that doesn't feel emotions. I do genuinely feel that he's upset about the death of Stuart Lubbock, and I'd also like to put out there that I don't actually think he was responsible for Stuart's death, but I do think that perhaps he knows more than he's ever let on to the world. Tough to watch. A good friend of yours talking that way about you. A friend, yeah. I mean, talk me through what happened that night. Oh, yeah. People were drinking, taking drugs. They were all having drinks. They said, oh, can we go in the jacuzzi? So I said, yeah, I've got to put the lights on, because otherwise you won't see where you're going. And then I went out there and had a drive. And as we walked out, I looked down and there's 
as Stuart uh, floating in the pool. And whether it's floating, like, when you see that, it's, it, you know, it's a very surreal thing to see. Quite a few things I've noticed about Michael Barrymore's body language throughout the interview with Piers Morgan is he often bites his lip. You know, when he's upset, maybe that's trying to hold in tears, not have emotion. He has a lot of activity on his forehead. You know, his eyebrows are often going up. There's lots of sort of lines on his head. He obviously hasn't had Botox, so you can clearly see his emotions on that part of his face. He's very expressive. He comes across to be quite upfront with peers. His body language is quite open and upfront, but then at times his body language can be quite strange and it's quite confusing to watch. And what, what went through your mind? I was just went into a bit of shock. I just went, oh, Christ. Um, you know, it's quite obvious he wasn't moving much. The first thing I did when I said it was run back into the house and get help from Jonathan, who I knew had lifeguard uh, experience, they come out and started resuscitating him. As I said, often the body language of Michael Barrymore is quite open to Piers Morgan, but then at other times it's defensive. When Piers pushes him on the death of Stuart Lubbock, whether he knew more, he suddenly becomes quite defensive with the body language, and you can see that with the use of his arms, becomes very defensive. Although he maintains eye contact with Piers throughout, he does sort of get a bit stressed and a bit angsty with Piers, gets a bit annoyed with Piers. He probably knew what Piers was going to ask, so I find that quite surprising. But obviously Michael Barrymore wants to protect his reputation, the reputation that was ruined by the death of Stuart Lubbock at his home in 2001. And still, after all these years, he's still trying to protect his reputation and fiercely denies having any involvement or any knowledge of how Stuart Lubbock died. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to, if you could bear with me, this is a copy of the letter. This letter, do you mind if I read it? Sure. And this is from the Crown Prosecution Service. I've never read this out or brought this out before because it's only come to light. In 10th of the September 2007, there was no evidence upon which to charge any person either for the death of Stuart Lovely or the injuries he sustained to his rectum. Michael Parker, me, has an alibi from three people in the period immediately prior to the discovery of Stuart in the pool. I therefore conclude that there is insufficient evidence against all three suspects for there to be proceedings concerning the death of Stuart Lovett or relating to the injury. As I said, he seems quite upfront, Michael Barrymore, throughout the interview with Piers Morgan. But at points, as I said, he becomes very defensive with his body language, but then he becomes quite defensive with his use of language. At one point, he says, you haven't let me finish, and sort of interrupts while Piers hasn't even finished giving the question that he's trying to put across to Michael. He seems very defences, defensive. As I said, he's clearly trying to protect his reputation and make it known that he didn't kill Stuart Lowick. I get it. But what I would say is this, that you, I, I guess you have to start, don't you, from the position that this young man, his father of two people... No, I'll get into that. No, hang on. I'll get into that. You haven't let me finish. Right. That family deserve proper answers. Mm -hmm. OK? At one point, something interesting, and I quote that Michael says in quite an angry, aggressive voice, I fucked up. What more do you want? I'm sorry. I couldn't be more sorry. Well, that doesn't sound very sorry. If you're sorry, show some empathy. He does cry during the interview with Piers. I do see emotion. I don't actually think they're crocodile fake tears, but there's no need to shout and be aggressive. Just because your reputation was ruined, you were one of the biggest celebrities in the country that I live, England, at the time that this happened in 2001, in the 80s and 90s. He was one of the highest paid entertainers and TV presenters in this country. He was extremely famous. This ruined him. It ruined his reputation. You can see from his use of language and his body language that that still hurts. It's still a sore subject for him. And that's why he shouts the I fucked up part because he's still very defensive about what happened on that day in March 2001. The truth about this, Michael, isn't it, is that we may never know the truth. Yes. You were there. What do you take responsibility for? I was responsible for allowing people to come back to my house and uh, go out to the pool. You would assume I was capable of looking after themselves. I had nothing to do with what happened to Stuart 
I am innocent. Something else that's known about that tragic night in March 2001 is that a lot of the people, I don't know who, but a lot of the people at the party were doing drugs as well as drugs. They were all drinking, generally having a good time, maybe getting off their face a bit. He's asked, did he facilitate them taking drugs? And he said, and I quote, I didn't facilitate him, Stuart Lubbock, taking drugs. Now, on that statement that I've just said that Michael Barrymore says, I'm not sure I believe him. I detect, detect, I detect that he's lying from that statement and I detect that he knows something he's not letting on, that he's withholding information. I do believe Michael Barrymore may have given Stuart Lubbock drugs that night. Again, it's just my opinion. Please don't come for me or get angry. I'm just putting it out there as a theory of what went on that night, but I do believe either Michael Barrymore gave Stuart drugs or he's aware that drugs were in the house circulating between the people at the party. He may not have given the drugs to Stuart, but he definitely knows that there were drugs in the house. I'm pretty sure the drugs were cleared away before the police got there, got on a way out of the house so that there was one less bad thing for Michael Barrymore and his precious reputation. Stuart uh, was found with various drugs in his body and you were asked directly if you had facilitated him taking drugs and you yeah. declined to answer. What was the truth about that? Well, I, I didn't facilitate him taking drugs, but um, no, I was advised that by, the, by, by my lawyers at the time. So you don't have to answer in a, in, in, in a coroner's call. You can just, that's the problem. I'm going to just say, I, you know, I didn't. Quite a few other statements that Michael Barrymore makes that sort of give me a red flag about him and that perhaps he, he is lying or not fully telling the truth, not letting on what happened. He was asked if he had anything to do with what happened to Stuart by Piers Morgan, and he said, and I quote in a very dramatic voice, I had nothing to do with what happened to Stuart. I am innocent, not 99%. I am 100% innocent. Now, I don't fully not believe him when he says that, but what I do find suspicious and raises a red flag for me about Michael Barrymore is the fact that he has to emphasise so much on not 99%, 100% innocent. If you're innocent, you just say, I'm innocent. I didn't kill Stuart Lubbock. You don't need to be so dramatic about it. It's quite strange that he has to be that dramatic. I could put it down to the fact that he's quite a dramatic person. He's a comedian. He's a funny guy. He was a TV presenter. Therefore, he is dramatic in general. Is that why he did it like that? Or is it to do with the fact that he's still defensive about what happened to Stuart Lubbock because of his reputation being ruined? Perhaps he doesn't have anything to do with it, but it's the defensive side of it that makes him shout it like that, not just say, I had nothing to do with the death of Stuart Lubbock. I am innocent. Not 99%, 100 Just I'm innocent. All you need to say, there's no need to blow it up to be something more than it is. You just, you're innocent, not 99, not 100, innocent. Why he couldn't have just said that, I'm not fully certain. I had nothing to do with what happened to Stuart. I am innocent. I am not 99.9% innocent. I am 100% innocent. And I am entitled to walk around with my head held high. What do you have Something else that's known is that when this happened, apparently Michael Barrymore called his manager, Mike, before the ambulance and the police and the emergency services were called. If that's true, that's quite shocking. Apparently a bit of damage control had to be done by the manager. The manager had to come round, tidy some things away. Michael Barrymore tidies up some things, takes some evidence away and flees the house. However, Michael Barrymore has always claimed that he didn't flee the house that day in March 2001, that he just sort of left. He didn't flee. Now, he says with the in, in the interview with Piers, and I quote, I did not flee the house. Now, I believe him when he says that, because listen to what he follows it up with. But then he said, as, as I said, he follows up with, but I did leave the house. So he's basically saying he didn't flee, he left. Well, fleeing and leaving are the same thing. You're just trying to make it sound like you didn't run off and think, shit, I'm in trouble, my reputation's about to go down the toilet, better get the drugs out of the house, better clear up any evidence of any foul play, quick, 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 hide the evidence, get out. That's what I get from that. So I do think he's being honest when he says he didn't flee the house, because in his mind, he's convinced himself that he left the house. Well, they're kind of the same thing. You should have stayed to face the police and make sure that the investigation into Stuart Lubbock's death wasn't hampered. I remember, now this is something I want to clear up. I did not flee the house. I did not flee and suggest I was running away. I phoned 
Mike Brown, my PA, my personal assistant, and I said, there's been a problem in the house, told him what had happened, it's going to be surrounded by a press, yes, I should have stayed. I should have said, no, I need to be here. But we can all do should-haves after the event. And yes, I should have. I didn't. So tragically, 20 years later, this cold case still hasn't been solved. But thank God there's been some great news in the UK, as I said, in the last week that a man has been arrested. Again, I'm not going to say who I think that man is, but we can safely say that man is not Michael Barrymore, as he's not 50 years old. I believe he's in his 60s. Now, there were a number of people at the party that night, women and men. Clearly, it's not a woman that's been arrested. So it's one of the men that were there that night and he's 50 years old. I really hope for Stuart Lubbock's family, justice can be done. And for Stuart Lubbock, justice for Stuart. Let's really hope that justice for Stuart is finally going to be done. Wednesday, the 17th of March, detectives from Essex Police's major crime team have arrested a 50-year-old man on suspicion of the indecent assault and murder of Stuart Lubbock. The man who was arrested in Cheshire continues to be questioned by our detectives. Following the arrest, we immediately notified the Lubbock family. This arrest is almost 20 years to the day in which Stuart was found unconscious in a swimming pool following a party at a home in Royden. He later died in hospital. The arrest comes after significant new information came to light following our renewed appeal for information and offer of an enhanced reward, which coincided with a major TV documentary broadcast in February 2020. This information has led to us making an arrest, and over the coming days, we will be contacting all those who were present at the party at the time, as well as others who may have information. As we stated last February, and have continually stated over the last 20 years, we believe someone or some people at that party know what happened. It is important to restate the fact that Essex Police has never given up on this case and that the force is motivated by the desire to deliver justice for Mr Lubbock and his family. Extremely lengthy and complex investigation, which has spanned over 20 years and remains ongoing. We have never given up on finding out exactly what happened to Stuart, and we will not stop in our pursuit of justice for him and for his family and friends. As we said a year ago, and have repeatedly said over the last 20 years, nine people were at that party. We know that not everyone was responsible for what happened, but someone was. Now is the time to come forward, if you haven't done so already, to set this matter to rest by providing us with any information you have. Thank you very much. I just want to put out here now that I'm not making any accusations. I don't know who murdered Stuart Lubbock, but what I do know is that there were nine people at that party that night and only eight left alive. Someone out of those eight people know who murdered Stuart Lubbock. That leads me to believe, because the party happened at Michael Barrymore's house, that Michael Barrymore must know or have some knowledge, even if minor, he wasn't there when it happened, because it happened perhaps by the pool or in the jacuzzi, perhaps he wasn't there. But someone knows, and let's really hope that soon justice, as I said, is going to be done for Stuart Lubbock. Just to wait 20 years at the end of this month, 20 year anniversary of this tragedy happening, to wait and not know what happened to Stuart, not get any answers and not see justice done and not see someone go down for life, it must be extremely hard on them. So fingers crossed everyone, a break in this case is going to happen very soon. Now, it's been great talking to you all again. I'd love your feedback on this. What do you think of Michael Barrymore? Do you think he knows more than he's let on? Do you feel his body language is a bit off? Do you feel he's defensive because his reputation went down the drain, went down the toilet, and his career was over when this happened 20 years ago? Do you think he murdered Stuart Lubbock? I personally don't, but I'd love to know your views. So as always, please share them. Please let anyone you know that loves true crime know about my channel. And as always, please like and subscribe. Anyway, guys, I'll be back very soon with another new video, true crime and some paranormal things are going to be coming on here soon. I'll be back very soon, as I said, and I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and your friends and your family. I'll be back very soon, guys. Take care now.
Bye-bye.